is it fair for fans to get irate when a property gets changed? A property they maybe have loved for decades. Whose property is it anyway? Is it the companies? Is it the creators? Is it the fans? That's, it's, a, it's a more complicated question than I think most people realize. Hey, this is Perch. Um, you know, I, I, I guess I've had some clarity lately, or at least, you know, was on the road for a bit. And I saw insert this video in sooner, um, as it's more fresh to the mind. Maybe people want to talk about it a little bit. But I find that there's there's an interesting dynamic about, and we'll use Star Wars as the maybe the perfect example, where you have a, a property, a a thing, Star Wars, and it's in the 70s is when it's made, and it has a bunch of fans, and then that movie ages, you know, you get uh, two more movies, you get Empire and Return of the Jedi, all in the 80s, and you get these three movies, and they're out, and then it goes quiet for a long period of time, and so, again, think of the ages of these fans, you have people in the 70s who are like 20, and they're, you know, falling, or even 16, let's say, they're in teens, they're falling in love with Star Wars, they're really excited about it, for whatever reason, you know, it's, it's a movie, it wasn't sci-fi movies like this really that existed there were some but it was doing a lot of new things and it was it was fun I and mean, people really attached themselves to it and then over the years you had toys and you had magazines and you had the lucas fan club and you had uh, books that were written in the expanded universe and you get you know marvel doing comics and dark horse doing comics and you get all this kind of stuff out there and then you know along come the prequels and the prequels in um you know, kind of the, the very, I wasn't this first now, very, very late 90s, I think, was the, the first one came out, and the second one was 2002, I think, and then the third one a few years later, and they're panned, you know, people are like, who's this Jar Jar, and this isn't the Star Wars, you know, and it, this is before the internet, before the you killed my childhood, and all that kind of stuff, and, and before Twitter was a thing, so, you know, there's, there was no big social network to get, you know, people get all mad on their MySpace pages, and they would post angry pay pictures, but nobody really cared, because no one was taking the internet seriously as that kind of vehicle, so, okay, so that's all fine, and then, then, then where do things land, then, then, you know, more years go by, Star Wars is sold to Disney, there's kind of more anger at that, because it's, you know, it's, the traditionalists, the hardcore Star Wars fans are pissed because, you know, now Mickey Mouse owns the thing they love and they don't like that. And then movies start coming out and they're, you know, it's like the first one came out and there's like mm, some complaining, but but generally, all right. And then you have kind of Kathleen Kennedy saying, hey, we want to change the property in this way or, you know, the force is female kind of comments, which then brings another dynamic into it. Now it's got a gender uh, thing associated to it. And then you get people saying, hey, what about fluid sexuality? What about uh, different races, what about all that kind of, and these are all things that people really hadn't, you know, wrestled with in Star Wars before. And I'm trying to be fair kind of on both, you know, on both sides, you know, yeah, it makes sense for people to kind of want to tell new stories, do things in new directions, all the rest. Sure. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just, that's just time passing. That's, that's pretty normal. And it's also not the weirdest thing in the world for fans to be like, Hey, what's this? I never had to deal with this before in my movies. And the reality is maybe they did deal with it a little bit before. I mean, star Wars in the seventies with a strong kind of female protagonist, you know, protagonist and Leia, she's a general. And I mean, there's, or yeah, whatever. Anyway, she's, she's got some authority and she's leading a ship and she's doing all that. She's standing up to Darth Vader. And there's a lot, there's a lot of things there that were probably quite progressive, you know, for the time. And, Again, it's the 70s. So now you think about the person who is 16, the 70s are seeing all this stuff and they're not necessarily, you know, realizing that they are seeing a lot of kind of new ideas, new things. And now you fast forward from, you know, mid 70s to you know, 2015. And I mean, you're talking about, count them, you know, one, two, three, four decades of time has passed. And, I mean, we're moving up on the 50th anniversary of Star Wars. I mean, just kind of contemplate that. So if you were 16, you're now in your 50s, moving to 60s with this property. And so times have changed. You've seen a lot of movies. It's normal for your taste to change. At the same time, you've also built up a lot of ideas about the franchise, about where it should go. You've read the books, and then Disney says the books don't exist anymore. And then Kathleen Kennedy says that it's a shame there wasn't a lot of source material to draw from. I mean... You get all these kinds of good and dumb moves that are happening. 
And I guess the point here is it's not surprising that you have a fan base that got so tied in to something, i.e. Star Wars, and then sees that thing changing in maybe good ways, maybe normal ways, maybe dumb ways. I mean, the Ewoks in Return of the Jedi were dumb. And yet, you know, it, it happened. It was there. Is it is it any more dumb than, say, uh, Jar Jar was, you know, more than a decade later? No, I mean, Jar, I mean, was Jar Jar more offensive than the Ewoks? I mean, who knows? It's all going to depend on your personal preference. But the point is, there were, you know, there were solid things in Star Wars. If you just look at Star Wars Empire and Return, there were things that were very solid that they did, changes they made. And then there are others that were more experimental and they, they worked out, you know, Hey, Lando. Great. You know, they bring in Lando, they bring in uh, cloud city, they bring in all these kind of, you know, uh, Darth Vader's Luke's father. And there's a lot of these, these elements they bring into the franchise and people weren't expecting them. They were subverting expectations, but they worked out just fine. And then you had some dumb things. You had like the Ewoks, you had that holiday special, you had a bunch of things that, that didn't land as well. And so the, the, Kind of the where it all comes down to is, you know, it's not I don't think the franchise today, Star Wars, is doing anything really different in terms of some smart decisions, some sticking with the what works, some trying new things that work and some doing dumb things that don't work. I think that's that's what's been happening and what continues to happen. The difference is there's now been extra weight attached to it. The fans in some cases, are claiming it's all part of an agenda to want to piss them off intentionally. And the property, the owner, the Disney, the whoever, the Kathleen Kennedy, whatever it happens to be, is, uh, well, the people who don't like our films are just toxic white men. And so on both sides, you have kind of this, these, not, not unreal expectations, but you have these extra things that are coming at the franchise from both directions that really take what has existed before what's normal and morphed it into new and frustrating directions where now suddenly we're thinking about, you know, that we're saying that toxic men are the result of some of Ryan Johnson's backlash, as opposed to maybe parts of his script were just dumb. You know, there are parts of the previous movies were dumb too. Maybe parts of his movie were dumb. And yet today, you know, whereas the old movies like, well, I was just dumb because that was a dumb decision. You know, Ewoks were just dumb. But today it's like, well, that wasn't dumb. In fact, this is the best movie that's ever come out ever from Ryan Johnson. And the people who say otherwise are just bad white men. That's that's the weird part. That's the part where on the company side, and, and here's where I think the company, it's not being the bigger person, but it's a little bit like that. I think the companies need to stand up and say, you know what, we're going to lay down our arms first, if you will. We're going to not be the bigger man, but we're going to we're just going to try and settle this, this debate a little bit. Um, you, you know, we're, we, if we didn't live up to your expectations, if we made a movie that, that you didn't like as a fan, that's on us. You know, we're sorry. Um, we'll try and do better next time. If you don't like it, you know, it's, you know, it, it's a shame. I mean, kind of like how people used to respond to, to movies that didn't land well. They used to just, go ahead and, you know, and, and say, well, I, I guess that didn't work. We're sorry. I, you know, I hope you like our next movie. They didn't turn it into world war three with the fans. And that's the part that has gotten really broken about Hollywood and about a lot of these properties is that it's not enough to just, you know, to just have a different opinion. If you have the different opinion, you are, you're wrong, you're evil, you're bad. And that's the stuff where I think the companies need to stand up and do it differently. I think the, you know, I've, I've heard people say, and I've heard companies say, well, the fans need to do that on their own. Why should they? Again, the fans have gotten wrapped up for decades into these properties. I think it's unrealistic to suddenly tell the fans, hey, you need to also uh, accept what we're doing with grace and not be upset if it doesn't appeal to you and just, you know, in a very Zen state, uh, just, just, go off and enjoy something else. I don't think that's fair. Now, I think that's good if fans can do that. And you've heard me say that a lot of times on this channel. I think fans should do that. And I think that's the right attitude to take for your own sanity. But I think that, that companies shouldn't rely on that. Companies are making a product 
that they want the fans to consume. So I think companies should stand up and say, look, um, we're sorry you didn't like our movie. Nothing really we can do about that. But we aren't going to make it your fault. We're not going to say that if you don't like it, you are evil. I think that's the that's the big difference. That's the change that needs to occur. Is we we've got to stop the escalation of whose fault it is that you didn't, Marnie, you didn't like the new Star Wars movie. Again, maybe parts of that Star Wars movie were dumb. There's always been dumb parts of Star Wars movies. And and to the fans, yeah, maybe you should lighten up a little bit. Yes. It's not unrealistic to tell you to lighten up. In fact, it's for your own good. But I think the the onus here, the responsibility, is with the companies to just stop turning it into toxic Avenger. <laughs> stop, turn, stop turning it into more than it is. Just learn how to walk away. Lots of people are able to do it successfully. Lots of people in the creative field are able to do it just fine. It's time for you to as well. Anyway, those are my thoughts. What do you think? Uh, leave me a comment below. Let me know uh, your opinion on this. This It's a very thorny issue that just will not die. So I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, like, subscribe. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Comic Perch. Would love to hear your opinions there. And most importantly, thanks for listening.